Okay, for today's uh, discussion, uh, we're going to start on chapter four, and I hope you've read through it. But basically, this is about trust design. Uh, so here on the screen, you can see a typical type trust. There, there are many kinds of trusts. There's um, this one is a. Hold on one second. This is the more typical kind, um, and in the truss you have this bottom part, which is called the bottom cord. These are top cords right here, obviously on the top, and inside you have web members. There's also other forms of trusses, uh, just for your information, there's scissor trusses, there's Pratt trusses, Howell trusses, Warren trusses. Etc. And all of these, of course, have to be designed by an engineer to figure out if they can hold up uh, the load which they're going to carry. Um, this obviously looks like it's going to be a roof truss. So, um, in order to do that, uh, you know, architects have to be familiar with it too. And how are you going to figure out this? Basically, what you're going to do is uh, turn it into a bunch of free body diagrams. Um, and these, they're already circled here. You've got one here you've got to study. It's everywhere there's a joint. Two, and it's called the method of joints. That's why. Um, three, uh, well, three over here, they're going that way. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So through this method of joints, you can figure out um, how uh, the stresses and the loads that are on the truss and then design it properly. So there are, of course, there are several steps in uh, designing and solving a truss. First, you've got to find the reactions. We've done that before. Uh, we did that uh, on beans last week. Um, to do that, you've got to start with any joint where there are no more than two unknown forces meaning you can't uh, solve it if there's three unknown forces. There can only be two. So then you draw a sketch of the joint or the panel joint and apply the law of statics or the equations of equilibrium, which if you recall are the sum of the horizontal forces equals zero, the sum of the uh, vertical forces equals zero, and the sum of the moments equals zero. So here you see I've written out uh, the first equation to find the sum of the moments about the left reaction. We've got a reaction here on the left and a reaction here on the right. So it's just like we've done before. Sum of the moments about the left is going to equal uh, the sum of the moments about the right. So first we have this first force, which is 400 up here times 8 going in the positive direction clockwise plus the next force which is going to be this 200 pound force that is 16 feet away 8 plus 8 is 16 positive then we're going to have a 200 pound force that's 24 feet away 8 plus 8 plus 8 right there and then there's going to be your right reaction which is going to go counterclockwise, so that's negative, and that's going to be 32 feet away. We don't know its amount yet, so we're just going to call it R, but this is how we're going to figure it out. So the sum of the left, moments about the left, is all the forces minus the reaction on the right is going to be equal zero. So you do the math, you've got 3200 plus 3200 plus 4800 minus 32 times the reaction on the right equals zero. Then you have 11,200 minus 32R equals zero. Then you can say 11,200, move the 32R over to the right equals 32R. Then 11,200 divided by 32 is going to be 350 pounds. So you know that this R is going to be equal to 350 pounds, and that's already written there. Uh, but that's one of the first things you've got to figure out. Then, of course, we're going to do it for the other side. Some of the moments about the right side. So you've got the left 
we're calling it L here times our pictures back up here uh, L times 32 feet and which direction is that going clockwise minus 24 times 400 that 400 is going down that's going counterclockwise so it's minus and then minus 200 uh, times the 16 feet and then minus the 200 times the 8 feet. So you do the math, you've got 32L minus 9600 minus 3200 minus 1600 equals 0. 32L minus 14400 equals 0. Do, do the algebra, 32L equals 14400. 14400 divided by 32 gives you your left reaction of 450, which is already drawn up here. Okay, now you want to start with any joint where there are no more than two unknown forces. So we know that we know this force has an upward force of 450 feet. We know that uh, these are the unknown components right here. There's two unknown, there's no more than two. If you get into the middle here, you start in the middle, you're going to have more than uh, two unknown components. So we're going to start over here, and then we're going to build our way up. Um, okay, so I've drawn a little diagram here showing that uh, point in the truss. It's our free, starting of our free body diagram. So in it, we have a force going up at 450. We've got a horizontal force and a vertical force and then uh, another horizontal force over here. Because all of the forces are concurrent, the sum of the moments about zero is going to be useless in this situation. The sum of the horizontal equals zero does not yield any results in this joint as yet because there are only two unknown horizontal, because there are two unknown horizontal forces. Therefore, we're going to try the sum of the vertical forces equals zero. Uh, seeing that the upward force of 450 pounds uh, must be balanced by a downward force of 450 pounds. The vertical component of force V2 right here in the upper cord is going to be 450 pounds out, acting downward on the joint. So here I've drawn another little um, diagram showing that V2 goes down, then we got a horizontal force uh, 2 uh, from this cord here, and then we got a horizontal force 8, which is going, those numbers are referring back up here to these joints, which I've numbered. So we got a vertical joint and a horizontal, I mean a vertical force and a horizontal force from 2. We only have a horizontal force from 8. So this is all we're concerned about right here. Notice that the top cord has a rise of 6 in a span of 8. So I'll move back up here so you can see that. You go up 6 feet and you go over 8 feet. So that gives you a lot of good information. Since the force in every member of a truss must be directed along that member when the loads are at the panel points or the joints, the components have the same ratio as the slope of the member and the slope of the member has a rise of 6 and a run of 8. So therefore, as I've written here, we have H2, which is equivalent to the run of 8, H2 over V2, which is going to be equal to 6. So you got H2 over V2 is equal to 8 over 6. You know that V2, we already know that, is 450 degrees. Pounds, so H2 over 450 equals 8 over 6. Then H2 equals 8 over 6 times 450. And so there we figured out that H2 is going to be 600 pounds. You should also notice that since the vertical component V2 acts toward the joint, right here, joint number 1, the horizontal component must also act toward the joint, um, act toward the joint, and in this case to the left. So that's why we know that's going that way and that's going that way. 
So now we can see that the true force in this top member, chord 1, 2, is going to be because uh, it's a right triangle, and this is going to be the hypotenuse of the right triangle. It's going to be the square root of 450 squared plus 600 squared, excuse me, 600 squared, which is going to equal 750 pounds in compression, acting toward. So that's in compression, and that's going to be the 750 pounds. Okay, so then how do we figure out this one right here? The force from 1 to 8. So that is the bottom chord, 1, 8. It can be found by applying the sum of the horizontal forces equals 0. Sum of the horizontal forces is going to equal H2, which is that horizontal force up there, minus H8. That's going to be equal to 0. So we already know that H2 is 600 minus H8 equals 0. So then if you flip that around, H8 is going to be equal to 600 pounds in tension, pulling away. So now I've, I've uh, drawn another little diagram showing these forces in here. We've got the 750 pounds in compression and the 600 pounds in tension. So we know those items. So now that we know that, um, it is possible to proceed to the, another joint where there are only two unknowns. Remember, you can only have two unknowns. Joint 2 cannot be solved right here because it now has three unknown forces. One, two, three. Uh, joint uh, 2, 3, 2, 7, and 2, 8. 2, 3, 2, 7, and 2, 8. Um, 1, 2 is the only known, this joint right here. Therefore, we need to proceed to joint 8 right here. Um, <clears throat> since 1, 8 is known, that joint has only two unknowns, 2, 8 and 8, 7. So we're going to proceed. Okay, so here I've drawn a diagram of joint 8 showing the 600 pound, pounds in tension uh, and tension means that it's going to be going pulling away from the joint. Um, and then we've got the unknown 2, 8, and 8, 7. Uh, since 1, 8 is shown acting to the left, the point is not whether a force in a member acts to the left or the right, but whether that member is in tension or compression. And we're only worried about the joint, whether that's in tension or compression. Uh, now apply the equations of equilibrium. Since the member 1, 8 is in tension, then its force at joint 8 is in tension. Therefore, the sum of the horizontal forces equals the sum equals H1 minus H7 equals 0. So you know that H1 is 600 minus H7 equals 0. And you got 8, if you flip that around, you're going to have H7 equals 600 pounds in T. So here I've written that out for you. The sum of the horizontal forces equals zero. There is no vertical force at joint eight. Therefore, uh, V is going to equal zero, or V equals zero, and it's called a zero force member. So now that we know uh, that's zero, and that's going to be 600, we can move on to joint 2 because the forces in 1, 2 and 2, 8 are known. Remember 8 was down here. Um, and the only unknowns are 2, 3, which is there to there, and 2, 7, which is there to there. So you start by guessing the nature of the force in 2, 3 and 2, 7. You have to start somewhere, so assume that they are both in compression. Hint. This is a hint. Top chords are normally in compression and bottom chords are normally in tension. The final answer will show up as positive for compression or negative for tension. So now you can apply the laws of equilibrium. You can see on this diagram that it's broken down. We've got a vertical force in this three and we've got a horizontal three. 
And remember, you've got the 8, 6. You've got a horizontal 7. Uh, and you've got a vertical 7. So if you want to try the sum of the horizontal forces equals 0, which is going to be equal to H8 minus H3 plus H7. Therefore, H3 plus H7 is going to equal 600 pounds. Well, we can't solve that just yet because there's too many unknowns there. So we're going to try um, the vertical joints. The sum of the vertical joints equals excuse me, the sum of the vertical joints equals zero. So you got V3 going down plus 400 is going to equal to V7 going up plus 450. Therefore, V3 minus V7 is going to equal 50 pounds. Well, this can't be solved either. So now we've got to resort to geometry and by ratio and proportions of similar triangles. So in doing that, we can use our proportions. H3 over V3 is going to be the same as 8 over 6. So therefore, H3 is going to be equal to 8 over 6 times V3. And similarly, H7 is going to be equal to 8 over 6 times V7. So then if we substitute we're going to have um, H3 plus H7 is going to be equal to 600. And we know that because this is 600 over here. And remember, the sum of the horizontals has to be uh, in equilibrium. So then you're going to say 8 over 6 V3 plus 8 over 6 V7 is going to be equal to 600 multiplying through by 6 to get 8v3 plus 8v7 is going to be equal 30 to 3600. Divide through by 8, because you've got a multiplier of 8 in there, to get v3 plus v7 equals. So then from the sum of the verticals equals 0, you've got v3 minus v7 V3 minus V7 is going to be equal to 50 pounds. Adding uh, parts 1 and 2 yields 2V3 equals 500 or V3 equals 250. Substituting in 1, uh, then we're going to get 250 plus V7 equals 450, or V7 equals 200. So now, with this information, uh, thinking back through it and, and understanding it, I want you to um, solve for H3 and H7 up here. H3 right here. Move that a little bit so you can see it. That didn't work. Try it one more time. H3 and H7. I want you to figure that out. Then, once you've done for H3 and H7, right there, you're going to solve for chord 2, 3, and 2, 7 by using the Path Pythagorean theorem. Remember, chords, if we go back up here to the top, you're going to solve for chords 2, 3, and 2, 7 by using the Pythagorean theorem. Um, after that, you're going to proceed to joint 3. So you know the sum of the horizontal forces equals 0, which is going to equal H3 minus H4. So H4 is going to equal, and then by geometry, you can do a vertical force 4 is going to equal 6 over 8 times H4. So vertical fo force 4 is going to be vertical. Uh, sum of the vertical forces equals 0. So uh, sum of uh, vertical 7 plus 200 equals vertical 3 plus vertical 4. Vertical 7 equals. And then member 3, 7 right here 
uh, is going to equal what? And is it going to be in compression or tension? Uh, so moving on, you're going to then do the force in 3, 4. It's going to be equal to the square root of h uh, horizontal force 4 squared plus vertical force 4 squared equals that. Is that in compression or tension? Then you can move to joint 7 after you've figured all those things out. So uh, I've copied my worksheet here and I will download this uh, as part of the assignment for today. But uh, basically we're going to see that the sum of the horizontals uh, equals zero cannot be used yet as there are too many unknowns in, in seven. Some of the verticals equal zero. You got 300 plus V4 is going to equal 200. V4 equals minus 100. So now we figured out that. Uh, but B, V4 must be downward um, because of the minus sign. By geometry, we can know that H4 right there is going to equal to 8 over 6 times V4. So H4 is going to equal 8 over 6 times 100 equals 133 pounds to the left because V4 should be downward. Remember that. So then uh, the sum of the horizontals is going to be 600 plus H4 equals 267 plus H6. And my notes say notice that uh, H4 should have been drawn to the left as seen from the computations. 600 plus 133 equals 267 plus H6. H6 equals 466 pounds to the right. Forces 7, 6 is uh, forces 7, 6 is 466 pounds in tension. And force 7, 4 is going to be the square root of 100 squared plus 133 squared equals 166 pounds in compression. So the sketch is in error. Then moving on, joints 6 can be solved. The sum of the vertical forces equals 0. Uh, force 6, 4 equals what? Sum of horizontal forces equals 0. Force 6, 5 equals what? Uh, and so forth. You can read all this on your worksheet um, that I'm going to download. Uh, and then you can certainly ask questions. Um, and we will, I expect you to come to class on Thursday with this filled out as best you can and we will continue the discussion then uh, on this uh, method of joints and we'll discuss a little bit about the method of sections on Thursday. So that's it. Um, be sure and leave your comments. Bye!